Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about manual SQL injection. And the whole idea is if you look through the other videos, we are always talking about automated SQL injection, how we could use lists of SQL vulnerabilities and be able to inject them into the web forms. And of course, that doesn't give you a great baseline or foundation of understanding about SQL injection. So for today, we're going to go through a manual understanding basic tutorial of how SQL injection actually work. There's going to be a lot more advanced topic as you progress through ethical hacking. And today's tutorial will give you a great baseline, good understanding, good foundation about how SQL injection work in the first place. What are the commands on different SQL servers? What are the inherent traits in different SQL databases? And how do you actually exploit them using available features and functions? And of course, from there, you can extract sensitive data and information from your web application server and then transiting to the database server. So today's tutorial will give you a great learning experience and feel free to let me know if you have any questions on below. Okay, so over here, I have Call Linux running and you can see from the backdrop, we have Metasploitable 2 running on another server. So over here, I can enter ifconfig and we'll be able to see the IP address is 192.168.1.10 and now we have already accessed the web server and we can go to DVWA and over here in DVWA we're going to go to SQL injection so briefly DVWA actually allow you to play with certain hacking techniques that you're trying to deal with and like I mentioned earlier this is going to be your elementary way of understanding about manual SQL injection and that's really important for you to to have a basic foundation of how SQL injection actually operate primarily so as you continue using some of the automated tools that I've shown in other videos like SQL map, at least you have a great understanding about how we actually use databases of SQL commands to try to get injection and get information in a highly automated manner so that this accelerates the whole process of hacking. So as a start, what we usually do to verify whether a web form is vulnerable to SQL injection is by a single quote. Of course, there are many, many other methods that we can insert or input fuzzing that we can actually insert into the web form. So over here, you can see that you have an error in a SQL syntax and check the module that corresponds to your MySQL server version, etc. And And what's really great is that it actually tells you what kind of server, what kind of database server that it's actually using. So we could stick our SQL query and SQL commands to MySQL. And of course, this also demonstrates in advance that this web form is vulnerable to SQL injections. So what we can go over is to use a command core union. So what union actually allows us to do when we use a union select is that it allows us to merge the columns used in a query. So what we can do is enter union select one comma two, for example, and followed by a hex. So hex would actually command out the rest of the SQL commands that are actually being input from the web application server into the database server. So selecting submit, we will actually be able to see the all the information from say first names first name to surname one and two so this would actually list out the the union of the information that we can get from the user id so we can see the result being displayed and it's union of the backend select query so moving forward there are also many other things that we can try to play around with so if you are a database administrator you know some of the typical commands that we use to try to understand about the about the existing database posture and of course, we have user and database functions that we can click submit. And this will allow us to see what are the information and allow us to enumerate the information coming from the user and the database. So of course, we can continue playing around with some of the other interesting commands that are, that are inherent in MySQL databases. So again, we can union select followed by session underscore user and of course, current user as well. So this would actually help us see what are the existing information that we can get out of it so we have session underscore user current underscore user as well followed by hex so hex will again like i said command out all the rest of the sql command and oh the user selects a different number of columns so okay we have to go back to the front and we have to enter union select so we gotta go union select uh select one comma two for example Union select, okay, and then hit enter, submit. So this will be able to show us the root at localhost as well as the root at asterisk, right? At percentage. So moving forward, again, let's say we want to understand about the version of the SQL database. Again, we can enter 
we can enter single quote followed by union select followed by version and of course this would help us see what is the version number of this this database And of course, this is just really simple ways of, of looking and trying to find more information about the system. And then, of course, in terms of active exploitation, it will allow us to have an accelerated pace in gaining access into the system. So, of course, there are also other items that we can do, and that is to actually read sensitive information of files through the load file function. So in the load file, we can put in, say, etc plus wd and be able to try to see if we are we can retrieve any information about the system. So when we click submit, we are trying to load the etc plus wd. Oops. Okay, so let's let's copy paste again. So you gotta insert and make sure the the information that you're supplying is correct. So I missed out a folder puff. So I'll click submit again, and this would actually list out all the user usernames in the in the system and be able to show us which username that we can try to attack against. And of course we have MSF admin, their typical syslog, etc. So if you enter who am I, so this would actually say I'm MSF admin. So we could see it being listed now into the into the query that we try to attack against. So this would actually improve the speed where we do not have to try a brute force attack as we have the list of usernames that we can try to hijack against. So there are also many other functions that we can try to input into. So another item is we are trying to read or write files into certain areas of the system so that we can later on inject into the system. So into out file followed by the, so we can enter, try to go to var, www, dvwa, for example, and cmd.php followed by hex and we click submit. So it says that we are unable to write or create file into the into this particular folder. And of course, this is because there are maybe there's an app armor running in most Linux systems or there is or there are some protective mechanisms that disable reading and writing from the web application server. So instead, we can actually enter TMP, which is a temporary folder in Linux that we can try to write files into. So I can click submit on this. So it says that file already exists, and this actually highlights one one area where we could actually see one of the files available on the temporary folder. So when I enter ls, I could see the different files that are already being written into the system. So if we go to file inclusion attacks, and we were to go to try to look at file tra traversal, for example, and we are able to see, for example, again, same thing, file inclusion allow us to see the different kind of usernames available by reading into the etc plus wd. And not just that, but we could also look at certain certain items like temporary folders, cmd5.php. Again, we're able to see over here a very small one. And when we do a cat of cmd5.php, this allow us to see what are the content within the cmd5.php. And of course, there are also other items that we can try to attack against. So the, the, the other general question is also how can we use, for example, SQL map to help us automate the system, help, help us gain access into the system. So there are, this, this will serve as a foundation for you to understand more about SQL injection. So when you're using automated tools, at least it gives you an idea about what is happening on the back end and not to, not to become a script kitty or to blindly use tools that, that actually help you automate the attacks and you understand and accelerate the whole process of the hacking attacks. So of course we've seen how easy it was to conduct SQL injection, extract different data from the databases and use the union function to help us extract different information and features and functions and get system information, server information from the database server. And of course, there are a lot more advanced topics that we're going to discuss on the subsequent videos. Today will give you a great learning opportunity and I hope you found it valuable. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And thank you for watching.